Welcome to this presentation. My name is Patrick Ollerton. I'm the product manager for Windchill Modeler. And today we'll look at the new features in Windchill Modeler 9.5. Our strategy is to continue being the systems and software engineering systems of record. Scalable, multi-user, enterprise deployment. We focus on our stunning user experience, which is a contemporary user interface, performance, and we rely on standards-based modeling, such as UML and SysML. We have integrations, and we continually innovate in specific areas, such as product line engineering variability. A big part of our work are the integrations with the other engineering design tools that PTC provides, RVNS and Windchill PLM. Modeler fits into this suite of applications to provide functional design, logical structure design, alongside requirements from RVNS, physical structure from Windchill PLM, and then validation and verification with Modeler and RVNS involved. Here's the product roadmap. 9.4 was delivered in May 2021 with diagramming, reviewer, packages, OSLC and ACEL enhancements. Modeler 9.5 focuses on usability, OSLC and performance. Going forward, we'll look into delivering SysML2 solutions, as well as more enhancements in the area of OSLC and digital product traceability. Let's look at Modeler 9.5 in a little more detail. We've delivered several enhancements in the area of usability, and we'll look at these in more detail in a second. We've delivered a new OSLC client for Siemens Polarian. We've continued our OSLC integration with Doors Next and added some capabilities for nested global configurations. We have some performance improvements and some improvements to user help. So first of all, let's look at simplified and productive item creation. So Modeler 9.5 has provided a new tool called the Creator which allows you to create multiple items and diagrams of different types very easily and very quickly in one operation. You can add those new items to the open diagram. You can use filters to search through the different types that can be created. You can work with all types of models and profiles and it has a really nice modern user experience making it very easy to learn and very easy to use. This capability is really aimed at new users who are starting out creating new models in Modeler and want an easy, quick way to start their model. So let's take a look at that new capability being demonstrated. So here we see Winchell Modeler 9.5 and we select a package in the package browser Click on the Create Item Diagram icon, and this launches the new pane for the creator. We can use filters to filter the different types that are available for creation, allowing us to show a focused view. Here we're seeing just the SysML types, here just the SysML and the structure SysML types. We can double click items to add them to the list to create, or use the Add button at the top there. And we can create items and diagrams of different types. We can also use the text filter at the top to easily locate the, the correct type that we want to create. So even if you don't know the meta model very well, you can easily find the items that you want to create. When we're happy, we can click on the create icon or first we can change the names. We can either accept the default new name or type in the name that we wish. Click on create and it will now create those new items in the selected package as shown. If we open one of the diagrams we'll be able to see an example of where we create new items and add them to the diagram. So this has now given us a quick start to our model. Let's go and add a few more items in there. And let's add some requirements. So a few design constraints selected. And note the add to current diagram is selected. 
So we click on create. And the items are added, selected, so that we can easily reposition into the right position on the diagram. So this is the new creator tool available in Winchell Modeler 9.5. The next enhancement is around context menu filtering. It's now faster and easier to locate functions on the right click context menu. We've provided a simple text filter at the very top so you can type in and it will search the context menu for commands that match that text. In the example, we've selected a, a typed in wind and it's it's filtered out the windchill exporter tool. The example below, we've typed in block and it's removed everything that's not got block in the name. So it's a very easy way to jump to the relevant function that you want to use. And this is helpful for new users and existing experienced users as well. Makes the user and model creation experience much faster and easier. Let's take a look at this in a demonstration. So if we start in the package browser, select a package and right click, we can see the filter at the top. So we type in some text, block, and we see that only actions relating to block are displayed. So again, this makes it very easy to find the things that you want to use and locate the functions that you need. If I type in port, it provides the port creation capabilities. And we can use some of the other functions, as mentioned, the windshield exporter. Any of the items that are on the context menu can be filtered. We see different things on different types when we select them. So in this case, we'll see some slightly different menu items and we've searched for find. So we'll see all the find functions. And there's the tell me tool that we can select as well. It's available wherever the context menu is available. So here on the diagram, we also have the filtering capability. And here are the different reports that we can run against that selected item. This is another great capability that increases productivity for our users. The next enhancement is the list of frequently used functions that we provide at the top of the context menu. So as you use functions and use Modeler, the system keeps a track of the frequency that you've used them and they're listed at the top of the menu. So let's take a look at this in action. Again, this is really helpful for new and existing experienced users, providing a very quick way to access the functions that are most commonly used by you. So if we right click on the package again, we can see that those five most frequently used functions are listed at the top for easy access. If we choose a different type, we'll see a different set of actions So they're tracked per type, so only the relevant functions are displayed and available. This is another enhancement that helps to improve your productivity and make it faster to create models. Winchell Modeler 9.5 provides some enhancements and optimization for the auto-routing capabilities. When we create links on diagrams, we have the option to use auto-routing, and we have some enhancements in this area. Less line crossing, more direct auto-routing, rerouting links when a symbol's resized, retaining manually added waypoints, and we also have an auto routing profile that you can use to configure and tweak the behavior of the auto routing algorithm. So let's take a look at this. So here we start with a use case diagram open. And first of all, we see the preview of the auto routing link. 
So we can see what the behavior will be when we have a normal use case added. Now it may be that you don't want to use the auto routing. So if you press the Alt key, then it goes to a direct link, which is what we're using on this diagram. And we see that it, it uses a direct link with no waypoints. So often that's the, the preferred option and it's very easy to disable the auto routing. Here we see an example of creating an association on a block definition diagram. And notice how that it's gone around the different symbols on the diagram effectively. So we have a better behavior where there's less lines crossing by default. When symbols are resized, we now also auto root relationships. So this helps to automatically keep diagrams looking neat and tidy. And this applies as well if you change the size of a symbol based on changing the compartment settings, for example. Here we see auto routing behavior um, as it is normally. And in the second link, we'll add a waypoint, the specific point. So we can now add waypoints in and the auto routing algorithm will respect them more than in the past. So this helps to control the flow of auto routed links. If we look inside the utilities profile, we can see the new auto routing profile. And this is where we can, we can disable auto routing for diagram types, variant diagram, for example, if we add the meta class into this diagram, or we can disable it for specific diagram types or instances. In this case, we can use the auto routing stereotype. We could turn that off so that specific diagram would be disabled. If we take a look at the auto routing properties and tags, we can see that we have different parameters that affect the behavior of auto routing. In this example, we can set the priority for avoiding line crossing. So the cross cost can be increased and then when you create diagrams, it will prioritize avoiding line crossing more than normally. Each of those parameters is described in the profile. So this gives you much more capability. Some excellent improvements in Winchell Modeler 9.5 to make auto routing work better automatically. The next enhancement is in the area of digital product traceability. Um, we've extended our OSLC capabilities to allow us to connect and work with Siemens Polarian. The, the use of this is to create and manage digital product traceability from system models to requirements. We already have these capabilities with IBM doors <clears throat> and PTC RVNS. This is a, the next phase in our requirements traceability capabilities. We have the standard OSLC client functions, so you can search for and browse requirements in Polarian from within Modeler, and you can see that in the, in the image. We can view preview pages, use drag and drop to create OSLC links and surrogates as we can with the other OSLC integrations. And we can navigate from Modeler to the link requirement in Polarian. Here's an example and a short demonstration of the capabilities. First of all, we add a server. So this only needs to be done once when you initially set up the correct connection. So we choose Siemens Polarian as the server type, add in the OSLC base URL. Click on OK and then we log into that server with a valid Polarian account. So that's now added as a server that we can then connect to and browse the information inside. It's showing us a list of projects and then at this level we can run a query. So we use the search terms query capability which searches text. Click on OK. And then if we expand that, it will run the query and return the results from Polarian. So 
So here we see three requirements that have come through. If we open a diagram, we can use that to create some example links using our standard drag and drop features. So we have a diagram open, we can go back to that OSLC browser and then drag and drop onto a model item to create an OSLC link. There we see the link and we can see the information about the OSLC link and the relationship. Here's the preview. So we can see the metadata for that requirement from Polarian. We can navigate from the model item to those OSLC links and there we see the, the link we've just created. So a great new enhancement for our digital product traceability, allowing us to connect to Siemens Polarian and ensure we have requirements traceability. We've also enhanced our integration with IBM Doors Next Generation. So this is now support for nested global configurations. In the previous release, we added support for global configurations. Now we can work with multiple levels of nesting. We've improved performance around reconcile and rebase with large models. So these are some great enhancements to shorten those operations. We've improved the user help. We've added a new starting page that is, provides role-based guidance so you can quickly get started with some information. We have the what's new and we've updated our getting started guide. So it now tells of all of the 9.5 capabilities. And I'd strongly recommend you take a look at that getting starting guide if you're new, uh, new to Modeler. It will give you a good explanation of the main capabilities in 10-15 minutes. So, in summary, Modeler 9.5 delivers important improvements to usability, OSLC digital traceability with a, an OSLC client for Polarian, and improvements to the OSLC client for Doors Next, performance improvements, and improvements to the help.